good luck and please let us know if you have any questions. So, hi guys, two quick responses to some questions that are sent in. I changed the labels of some of the problems, but they're pretty much the same, okay? So here's problem number one. Problem number one is pretty much like this. You pick two cards. I want to know, what's the probability the second card is, say, a heart? Given that the first card was an ace. Okay. Okay. So there are two ways to do this. One is uh, what I call the high school way, where we we'll kind of take this for granted and then work assuming this has already happened. Even though there's no time element, you kind of know what I mean, right? Okay. The second one is the brute force way. The brute force way is the one that looks like this. So this probability should be the probability of the first event, second is a heart, and the first is an ace. Right? Over, so them happening together over the probability of just the bottom guy, or the right guy happening, right? So just the first being an ace. Okay. Okay, so before I do it the brute force way, let's do it the cheapo way first. Okay? So in the cheapo way, what I'm gonna assume is the first card is already an ace. So that's great. So you've already been given that the first card is an ace, no choice about that. So let's compute that. Given that the first card was an ace, what's the probability the second is a heart? Okay, so this is already pretty mellow. So one thing though is, it kind of depends, right? It kind of depends on whether this ace is a heart or not a heart, right? So we actually break it up into two cases. So in the first case, this ace is not a heart. Okay, but in the second case, right, we'll take a look and say, what's the probability the second is a heart given that that ace happened to be the ace of hearts? Okay, and let's just work at each one. Well, this has already happened for you, so don't worry about it, right? So you tell me, what's the probability you get a heart? Well, how many cards are left? There are 51 cards left in the deck because you pull one out, right? How many hearts do you have? Normally you have 13. Here you didn't pull a heart on the first card, so there must still be 13 out there. So I think that's it. So let's try this one. What's the probability that the second card is a heart, given that the first one was a heart? Well, again, 51 cards left, no big deal, right? How many hearts are out there? Well, you've already pulled one out, so now there's just 12 left. Okay. Not too bad, right? But we're not done, just have to do a little bit more. So let's work on this. We broke it up into two cases, and if the cases had a 50-50 shot, that'd be one thing, but not equally likely that we'd be in case one versus case two. So we have to take care of that. So this is the probability that you can get a heart on the second card, given that the first card was an ace, but not a heart, right? But if you can, in order to even get to that situation, you have to be lucky enough for this ace not to be a heart. So, can't control that it's an ace, that's already there, but we don't know if he's a heart or not, so let's figure that out. So, to be in the situation we're talking about, this card has to not be a heart, right? So, how many aces are out there? It looks like there are four aces out there, right? How many of those aces would give you no heart? That would be three of them. Do you guys agree? So, four aces, one of them is an ace of hearts, the other three are not. So, three quarters of the time, this ace is not going to be a heart. But that also means down here, what are the odds you're going to get an ace that is a heart, right? Well, that's just, again, out of the four aces, one of them happens to be a heart. Okay, so now that's what we've done. <clears throat> so you have two options, right? Before you get your hand, you have to guarantee me that the first guy is not a heart. Show me the second guy is a heart. So multiply, right? In the middle of making choices, we multiply. So that's 3 times 13 over 51 times 4. Okay, no big deal there. How about over here? Same deal, right? First you have to show me this is a heart, then given that, what's the probability the second is a heart, right? So this gives me the first card is a heart, then after that, this is the probability the second one is a heart, right? So we multiply again, because I need to do both things before I can see what my hand looks like. Okay, so that's 12 times 1 over 51 times 4. Okay. And since both of these are different ways of getting what you want, right? I mean, this is one possibility that would make you happy. You would get us. You would have the second card. This would make you happy. You would have the second card being a heart, and the first card would have to be where the first card would have been an ace. So th this is good. That meets our qualifications, right? Okay. Second card is a heart. That's what you wanted. And if you look here, you're meeting the requirement that the first card has to be an ace. Okay. So this is good too, right? So two different ways of getting what you want. You know, if that happens, you need to add, right? So let's tally our results. We end up getting 3 over 13. I mean, we can reduce. There's a factor of 3 at least that will come out. But no big deal. Plus, on this side, 12 
times 1 over 51 times 4. And again, lots of reduction that can happen there. But let's just leave it like this for the moment, because this is a valid answer, and I don't think the prof will care. Once you get it to this, I think he'll be happy. Okay. But for those of you who don't like that and prefer the traditional method, we can do that too. Okay? So let's do the traditional method. Always, at least in my opinion, go for the easy part first. Very mellow doing this. What's the probability the first card is an ace? We could totally do that. So out of the 52 cards out there, you're going to pull one to be an ace, right? So out of the 52 cards out there, you're going to pull one to be an ace. How many aces are there? There are four. Okay? And then technically, for the second card, you can pick whatever. It doesn't matter, because all you want is the first one to be an ace. Okay. So now, let's do the top part. That top part's a little confusing. So what I want is, I want the second card to be a heart, and at the same time, the first card to be an ace. Okay, so again, even if I were doing that, I think we would fracture it into two cases, right? Because they're kind of t tied together. They make, the odds of getting a heart kind of depend on whether the first card was a heart or not a heart, right? So if we're going to work with that, how does that work out? So let's think about this. Again, it looks very similar. We're going to have case one, case two. And in the first case, what's going to happen, let's say the first card for the ace was not a heart. And in the second case, let's say the ace was a heart. Okay, then I need a, uh, an ace and a heart. And then again, an ace that's a heart and another heart. I need both things to happen for me, right? Okay, so let's just compute that. So over here, let's compute this probability. So the probability that you end up getting an ace is what? Uh, I guess 4 out of 52. I guess you the first card is an ace. But the probability that you get an ace that doesn't happen to be a heart, that's only 3 out of 52, right? No big deal. And then after that, though, that's not enough. So now, given that you know this is what's going on with this first card, what are the odds the second card would be a heart? Well, the second card would be a heart, let's see, there's 51 cards left, right, once we make this move. How many of them are hearts? Since we didn't use a heart here, we have all 13 hearts left over, right? Okay. So this would be the probability up top. Now let's do this one. So again, I want an ace that's a heart, that's only one card. There's only one ace of hearts, right? So only one ace of, heart, ace of hearts out of 52. Then, given that, 51 cards left, how many, what are the odds you get a heart here? Not all 13, but 12. Do you guys agree? Okay. You see, we're basically running the same computation, right? Okay, so let's finish this now. So this makes you happy, this makes you happy. Both work together, so different ways of getting what you want. You know, you add. So 3 over 52 times 13 over 51 plus 1 over 52 times 12 over 51. So we get this setup. And I think if we did it right, our answer should be the same. Okay? In fact, let's make life easy. I think I'm going to take this 52 and cancel here. Oops. So that's not a 52. Here and here. Do you guys agree? And I'm going to take that 4. I guess we could just leave him on bottom. So let's clean this up. This is 3 times 13 over 51, right? We'll bring that 4 here and here. So 4 times 51 plus 1 times 12 over 51. And again, the 4 distributes here. So, so 4 times 51, and I think we have a good match. So either way makes no difference, whatever you're comfortable with. I personally prefer the high school technique, but if that bugs you, this technique will always work out. Okay. Here's the idea, you want to go say hunting for something, like smurf hunting. Okay, so you go smurf hunting and you decide, uh, you go out every day, you look for a smurf. And the odds that you catch a smurf are something like this, 1 out of 10. Okay. So the odds that you catch a smurf are something like 1 out of 10. Okay, so not that bad. And in fact, let me make it actually harder for you. Let's say 1 out of 100. Okay, so one out of hundred, you catch a smurf on a given day. So you keep trying. In fact, you try for an entire year. So you try for 365 days to catch a smurf. And every day, your odds are one out of hundred that you actually get the smurf. Okay. So my question for you is: You go hunting all year long. What is the probability that you catch exactly ten smurfs? So first, do it for real. The real version is this. Um, by the way, even more important than that, what sort of distribution is this? And I'll let you know that the hunting is independent. So every day is a fresh start. You don't have to worry about the smurfs getting wise to you. Okay? So the setup is something like this. Every single day you can either catch one or you don't. Success or failure. I told you that every day is independent, right? 
So if they're an independent and everyday success, success or failure, also notice, like we talked about in the review, there's a fixed number of trials. You're going to try 365 times. So if it was something like just keep trying until you catch a smurf, that's geometric, right? But since this is try only 365 times, how many times do you win? Or how many times do you get lucky, right? In that case, it's got to be what? Binomial, right? Okay. So we already know this is a binomial setup. Doesn't really matter what you call it as long as you can figure this stuff out. Okay, so here's our setup. So out of 365 tries, you want to succeed exactly 10 times, right? The probability you win exactly 10 times. So 365, choose 10, right? Probability of success is like 1 out of 100, right? Okay, you want to succeed 10 times, but if you fail, 99% chance, right? So success, 1 minus success, uh, how many times? So succeed 10, fail 355. Okay. That's the actual probability. Okay. So the binomial distribution on this guy. Okay. But why don't we do something else like this? Um, again, technically you have to check if the parameters are good. So I want to try a Poisson approximation. And then the Poisson, because this is kind of a pain in the butt to compute. It's actually not that bad, but it's kind of a pain. Okay, so if I want to put some, remember, technically, I need a couple of things. What is the average for binomial? So the average number you expect to catch is NP, right? So here we had 360 trial, 65 trials. The probability of success was 0.01. So we would expect to catch 3.65, right? Or win 3.65 3 times. Okay, that's pretty small. I don't know if your properly cares about this or not, but for the Poisson approximation to be pretty good, you want the individual probability of success to be relatively low. Okay? You also want the n times p, the expected number here, to be less than or equal to 5. Okay? In this case, it is. So we can try this out. Okay? But remember, it's all about the average. The average binomial is np. That makes sense. 365 tries. You do it 1% of the time, 3.65. Right? Translate that to average here. So the average is 3.65. But you know, the average in a Poisson distribution is lambda, right? So that's all we're doing. So again, if you know the average is lambda, then we'll just run a regular Poisson. Then we're gonna get this. So you want exactly this. So probability of success exactly k times, or in this case, 10 times. It's gonna be e to negative lambda. We said that lambda was 3.65 times 3.65. So lambda to the k, which is 10 over 10 factorial. Okay. So, not that bad, right? Okay, so again, what were our basic ideas? Think about the distribution, success or not, independent and fixed number of trials, that means binomial. If you kept going until you succeeded, that would be geometric, right? Then, the second part of the problem is, give me a Poisson approximation, right? Technically, binomial is NP, and the average for Poisson is lambda, so to do this approximation, we're gonna have to have the same average, right? So that NP becomes your lambda, okay? So again, average, general term, you can call it expectation, it's all the same thing, more or less, okay? So not too bad, right? See you later, alligator.